So welcome everyone to the still zeroth episode of the Great Afro Terquanian when I'm trying to redo an old and legacy system into something useful. Um, we'll start the real full setup next time, so this is still going to be uh, mostly preparations, um, also because of the audio setup that uh, may be a problem. Um, still, it's kind of special to have a first episode, so a specialty, so this code is powered by uh, Tiekwanin Charcoal Roast. Um, which means a tea that has been uh, dried or charcoal and has a pretty, let's call it a distinct taste. Um, if you like pours or smoky whiskey, uh, you know what I mean. Uh, it's mostly socks, but we prefer to call it earthy. Um, so, let's start with the tea. That's the most important thing. And um, then let's review where we have ended uh, last time. And. Uh, last time uh, we had a working docker setup, so let's see whether that's still true. Um, so I should be... And just in case anyone asks, uh, that was the streaming software crashing. Somehow a common occurrence to me, although everyone says our OBS is stable. Um, that happens whenever uh, you're doing anything with a computer. Uh, you go close to any and they die. Um, anyhow, so I have connected to the Linux computer uh, where I actually have the main uh, code um, and wanted to verify whether if we start the Docker com uh, containers, uh, whether we'll be able to see anything. So the um, the server seems to be running. The app seems to be running, so we're good. Um, so one thing that is cool on... Uh, oh, see? Um, but at least, uh, at least something. Uh, but one thing that's cool on uh, Django is the built-in admin that you can configure, so... We do have at least some form of admin, um, but the reason why this failed is that this requires a pre-populated data that I think I haven't loaded last time, so that's uh, what we should do, and I think that that should be described in our old readme. So... Um, we have done the test that work. Uh, we haven't loaded the data with pages, so let's do it now. And I'm not sure I can do that in parallel, but let's try. Okay, so now if we reload, we do have a different reason why this uh, doesn't work. So let's go. Um, Anything else? Nope. So, README doesn't work anymore, and we should fix it out. Uh, and the reason is a missing table. Um, since you're starting from scratch... Hmm. Uh, since you're starting from scratch, uh, after a while, I'm actually not sure whether our old database survived, so... But it, if it wouldn't, then the old fixture shouldn't work. I mean... Um, oh, that's new. So let's see, uh, do we have any changes as opposed to in the repo? We do. Um, we do have that one translation from the last time 
the shot dog I should probably just connect uh, which branch are we in oh uh, we are in the branch of making the docker work from the last time but I would argue that we are not done yet uh, if you see this uh, so let's just oh there was just um change in uh, how my editor versus migrations and little white spaces um, that's one of the annoying things so um, let's not commit everything let's uh, just commit the migration uh, sorry the docs is what I wanted to commit I wanted to kill the migration um, so so that, that's a translation for the charter uh, for the creations, okay. Uh, so that's where we are and uh, kill the rest. Let's pause because it's just a go to hygiene and um, you know, see how the Circle CI is doing. It is a good team. And uh, let's see what was our problem here. So if you would want to do migrations, we supposedly have something that's not reflected in the database. And Let's see how it works. Uh, content auto. So this is apparently left over from whatever I've been doing a year ago. I have no idea. Um, so the auto migration was working for a gallery. We have been changing fields. I mean, um, okay, why not? Except for the fact that this seems to potentially conflict with production. Um, That is always scary. Migrations are always the most uh, the scariest part of an app, like touching a database, especially if you're sharing that with another app. Um, that's something to always triple check. Um, so actually, let's see what we've been doing here. Um, back in 2019. Installation notes. Fix initial for regular migration. Well, that's um, I see. So remember how we have uh, think out with the SC that by the way that was in the initial migration and. So it was gallery. But uh, photo stands for photo gallery. So that was the photo migration that we've been doing. this also I have no idea who, who, who tinkered with that model but this actually this is going to be the same problem uh, so we have tinkered with the seated setting 
so now it is implementing it as changed but if it's not parameterized in the old model um, this is what happens um, but why would change it on those fields what was there before uh, so Cesta which stands for path and uh, path thumbnail oh so it wants us to my migrate from the misanko the text field to the text field why so this is actually something that uh, I'm going to explain in the next episode um, but um, TLDR is that the way uh, this application handled encoding is fucked because PHP is totally not well was originally not equipped um, to handle text intelligently it's basically handling text as a stream of bytes regardless of its encoding and uh, how it interprets interprets as text is dependent on the setting of the database and of, of PHP uh, which was not set correctly uh, so the result is a partial um, garbage in database encoding wise uh, which is what we are working around here uh, but I have no idea what uh, makes the migration model think uh, that we need to change it back like how it detected that option since the uh, alternate text field is actually a sub subclass of the text field um, plus um, why we don't have a table we should have um, but alas uh, one way to find out uh, one way to find out um, let's create a superior reserve and see in admin what models we can manage so um, I think that that should be actually in the manual if you ask me and yeah, this should be in the this should be in the uh, docker branch as well so let's create a supervisor Admin. Uh, we are not really going to send anything there. Oh, come on. It is a test user on a isolated network. Um, if you insist. Um, so let's just verify that it works before we recommend it. And we have crashed again. The OBS streaming software is apparently made for someone else. So um, while we connect to the original stream, I have logged in. Um, it is all guys to check, which is probably a bit annoying for this stream, uh, but I think that's still useful. Um, at least we can see how things are localized. So. Uh, because this is for uh, this is for check audience uh, and I'm thinking whether not to make it localizable then uh, so this uh, this webcast is useful for both international audience and for the local audience hmm. anyhow um, the model we've been complaining about was this one and actually yep there is a problem um, so why do we well so first thing first uh, let's um, document this um, so let's go to readme there is a readme right 
Why are you not in the, the uh, indexing? Visual Studio. So, um, migrate. Um, so here you can, you should verify your application works. Um, and open HTTP localhost uh, at 8000. And uh, just pay attention, localhost uh, may be a different host if um, you are not working on Linux. So uh, on macOS, um, Docker runs in a virtual machine that's going to have its own IP address. Uh, so you just need to connect to it. Um, and then, um, so, so um, create yourself a super user. Um, so that's going to be the uh, that shortcut. Manage by so create super user. Uh, and then um, review content at um, admin. So Right, we have the extra migration, but it's currently untracked. So, um, all right. Um, so when we have that, let's try to figure out what's missing. Um, Can we enter my C? So if we would run the database container and enter my SQL, then we can't connect to the local socket. Which is the problem we've been trying to sort out here before. Um, that you should connect to the local server. Um, gosh. And what was the client? Uh, what was the client option in that end? Anyone remembers? Uh, it should be dash h. Huh. So if you would do localhost and database should be this. Mm. Can't attach to a container. This is one of those things that make me question whether it wouldn't be easier to uh, just set up a normal, normal clean MySQL server on that machine, uh, so we don't have to sort out problems with uh, uh, problems with uh, persistence. Uh, But then, um, even though uh, this this is ignoring our parameters, uh, so maybe it's the parameter testing also. Um, well, so if we just enter it, okay, uh, is the MySQL container running actually? Uh, 
We don't have PS command. Wow. Okay. Um, well, we're running a container and we have overridden the entry point. So, in a way, uh, so we have overridden the entry point. Uh, so, the command is not running and you're not in the same container. Yep, Docker debugging. So, um, Do we actually, so is there a persistence set up in, like, could we do volumes, uh, is there any recommended way to do volumes in MySQL Docker? Um, Oh god, internet in 2020. Yep, this is the great workaround trick. You can choose uh, which cookies you're going to use. It will just take forever for you to um, enter the site as we are, you know, disabling it with all our third party partners. I mean, sure, all of those are um, private companies that uh, can do whatever they want to. Um, I just wonder whether this wouldn't be, uh, you know, just just imagine this infrastructure being electricity. Um, cute. Can't opt out via HTTPS protocol. What do you mean that you can only opt out using HTTP? That's such a bullshit. Anyhow, um, <coughs> so this is how you run MySQL, um, connect to MySQL from the MySQL client. Okay. Sure, sure, configuration. They're not discussing volumes, like, exactly, where the story is. Oh, connect with try loop. Um, that may be interesting to look at. Um, but anyway, okay. So let's let's do container. And actually, I mean, since we have it all contained, um, let's make a directory for that called dot db. Uh, that will be it ignored. Um, and let's mount it correctly. So that's going to be that's going to be in the Docker Compose file. Um, volume. 
names db will go to parallel mysql i think sure sure um so let's see how we handle it uh, i mean first well, the thing. And have a team meanwhile. Mm. Well, let's run the migration again. Uh, connection refused. Alright, uh, is it because it is uh, creating the initial database? Yep. Um, I haven't exactly wanted to apply the auto migration anyway. Uh, but what is suspicious is that it only applied the new SDD status migration, whereas it should be. connecting somewhere else, which actually makes me wonder whether we are really connecting to the container or whether there is. MySQL running on the host that we are connecting to, which would kind of suck. And there is one. I mean, we shouldn't have the correct auth, but just to be sure, um, let me stop that. Will it be the same now? Yep. Okay, so it's just ignoring the volume setting. Uh, although it's clearly defined. Um, and the volume syntax Is correct, I do believe. Um, is it one of the things I'm always confused about? Is a trailing slash? Um, that's like. Trailing slash and the way. Uh, okay. Uh, tra trailing slash um, and the way error handling about uh, trailing slash looks like. Because that's like. Nah. Well, maybe common thing to uh, solve the problems. New kit from orbit. Um, I mean, are we still running? Okay, so there's a problem. Uh, we are reusing the container. So it hasn't stopped. Um, so now, hopefully, and when we are doing that, uh, let's actually not use the new migration. Uh, like that one seems to be off. So. MySQL server, okay. See? But MySQL server tried to create uh, something, so that works well. And we're running the migrations. Cool. So, I mean, let's do the load 
Toto, which I've been doing here. Create us the super user again. See what happens. Plausible. Um, so this is running, and this still is not running. There we go. So provably, uh, Django admin is so ugly uh, that it makes uh, the streaming software crash, which is new. But anyhow, um, we have been able to redo the database from scratch and discovered that it was not our problem. Um, the table we are looking for is still not created, uh, although we have applied all migrations and there was no error. And um, if nothing else, although not managed this DB table, Wait, there we go. This, yeah. right. So this calls for uh, more thinking. Um, so what we've done here. Um, this is actually an old initial migration that was created by inspectdb command, more or less, where uh, inspectdb is a jungle feature where it goes into your database, uh, inspects uh, the content and kind of auto detects all the model that you want to get out of it. And uh, in order, like the, the problem here is um, to allow development from scratch as we're doing now, as well as developing on top of an existing database um, that is also used by another system. Uh, the key problem here is this attribute called managed, uh, which means I I recognize uh, this table, um, but I do not treat it um, I, like I, I I will not handle migrations for it uh, because I assume that you have seeded it uh, from uh, from some other source. Um, so you're on your own, uh, but I will create a model. Uh, I will have a model. Uh, you can query it. Uh, you know we can work with the data. Uh, but I will. I, uh, I as in Django will not table uh, handle schema updates. Um, there are two ways to fix it. One is uh, that we are going to just acknowledge the fact uh, that this is primarily for a legacy system. And I will export um, an SQL 
schema definition with all the data uh, that we will then load as part of loading fixtures and everyone developing this would be required to have that um, and it will be committed in the repository which I'm actually not sure I haven't done um, to give people an idea on uh, how the system looks like um, no I haven't so th that's option one uh, because there's actually not, nothing secret about the schema or private uh, the option two would be uh, that we will continue fiddling with the managed in which um, if we are going to be on production um, the default state is but basically we're going to go the way uh, we have went with um, the other tables uh, which is uh, if you're not on production uh, yeah if the database is not seeded where was it yep if the database is seeded um, from pro in production uh, then um, as it is in production then this is not managed until it's explicitly marked as managed in production uh, sorry in migration whereas uh, if you're starting here locally from scratch um, this is going to be created uh, managed for you um, I have started with that uh, I am starting to be tempted uh, to say that it would be better to kill this in fire and um, migrates to it towards having the skeleton. Because I mean, this kind of works. Um, but it's super confusing. Um, all right. Uh, so this is fun, uh, this is one of the fun thing if you're trying the mounting. Um, the thing is that if I'm, I'm just for the record, I'm cleaning the database because we have. Uh, change the manage in the initial migration so we have to rerun all of it um, if you're sharing the file system uh, the container still creates the fastest the file attributes um, under the user ID of the system that's within um, the container uh, so if uh, root process or bicycle process creates those files um, they have the UID number which then propagates into the host system so you can this way create files that you can't delete um, actually given how we're experimenting with it uh, let's have this as a trifecta uh, so we want to do my uh, Migrate and then we want to do load pages and then we want to do um, create super user. Sure, sure. Um, was it load pages? Load data pages, okay. That's what you have documentation for yourself. People pretend it's for other people, they're lying.
So up and running. And suddenly this works. With better encoding, but it works. Um, this is most of that uh, coding problem I've been talking about. So let's see whether the streaming software now crashes. I'm r really interested whether, um, you know, it's logging into the admin. Okay. This is super cool, actually. <laughs> so yeah, logging into Django crashes OBS. That's, that, that sounds like a proper bug report. <laughs> okay, I remember that. Um, that would be a, maybe a, a, also potentially a fun thing to debug. Uh, so, Django admin login, kills OBS. I don't want to uh, open my standard tools here, so I'm making it out on paper. Anyhow, um, so now we actually have uh, some environment set up. Um, do things actually work? Wait, where have I been? This was not working. So A, you can see that certain characters are screwed. Uh, so we have fucked some encoding up. And B, um, one of the principal features in the old code that I wanted to uh, retain is uh, changing skins. And that is supposed to leave you at a page where you are, um, but apparently it doesn't. So that's something to fix. Do we have a bug report for that? Um, Issues, issues. Um, no, it doesn't seem like that. So let's create a new issue. So changing uh, skin takes you away from the page you are at. Um, this is actually a small thing. Well, actually, um, let's see whether it's on production as well, just so we're not overreacting. Um, Yeah, but it's uh, so it's uh, back on production. It's probably a good first issue. I think that this should be easy to uh, to fix. And um, definitely not required for Iraq. Um, yeah, I had ambitions. <laughs> It's definitely going into the right feature. <coughs> this um, should have some housekeeping as well. Uh, let's actually see where we, we've been at because I think that we're kind of good to go and start doing stuff. Um, So, right, so creative. So, if you look at the organization, um, on production, I think, um, it's a better. And let's not do that in this browser. I totally have a terrible idea having uh, production and uh, non production on the same page. Uh, so, if you look at the old production, 
uh, and you go into uh, a part where people are writing um, and you have to log in like wow <laughs> uh, it looks like any login kills the streaming um, Also, let me see whether I'm actually resuming the stream uh, on OBS works, yeah. So, well, <laughs> uh, but the whole point of that, uh, of this was uh, to encourage people to contribute, like to submit their own work. Um, and for that, uh, the editor uh, of the particle area uh, was asked to write how they imagine the contributions to, to work and um, this was totally uh, done like by hot patching and uh, manually uploading uh, HTML files to FTP servers so you can see that uh, one of those is just like you know a plain text file um, if I would look here Ah, sufficiently similar. Uh, nobody bothered with any uh, fanciness, but I think that at least it should be uh, in the same design and part of the page, uh, as opposed to you know uh, being this ugly. On the other hand, it's probably mobile friendly. Um, I'm wondering that is probably a good issue for us to start, um, but it feels that before we move there, uh, I would maybe go and um, merge to master and deploy and see whether our deployment still works because that's going to be important uh, going forward and um, you, you know for us to have that feedback loop uh, that we are actually doing something right and that uh, what I've done here doesn't um, screw things up so um, I think that there should be a script for that um, the script is ugly as fuck uh, and working. Uh, so, refer right, so we do have a script for Destiny migration. So, this, this is actually a refreshing database from, from production. So, um, I can test the migration before it happens. Um, This is the fast CGI run uh, that you can ignore for a moment. Uh, this this is uh, how the application actually actually runs on production. Um, it is a FCGI process on the background that's on the foreground handled by like the, the, the HTTPD, um, and um, deploy is just uh, creating a bunch of. Uh, uh, a, a virtual environment on the remote end um, yeah I'm doing all the usual Django stuff so check migrate the database um, load the data about the uh, about the page parts and be done with it so I think that this should hopefully still work um, it makes me want to run the backup though, uh, or at least to verify uh, whether the backup on the um, other side is running. Um, so uh, let me just um, correct my. Well, I'm on a bad computer, never mind. Um, so. Um, Let's see whether on the uh, right, and I do have a randomly generated password for that. Um, so let me for a sec 
stop recording um, the screen um, and open my password manager here um, because this is obviously a secret. So I should be good and I should be out of the screen range. Yep. Um, so let me copy paste stuff. Uh, as I said, uh, the optimal way to do that, uh, to do this, is to have the YubiKey setup. Uh, but all right, and I'm doing it wrong, obviously, because um, I've been looking for a backup password. But what this is asking for is uh, for my SSH key. Uh, password which I have apparently a problem remembering um, and I just wanted to check here aside from the fact that we're still running surprisingly um, whether we do have a backup uh, from today and we do um, so here, here you can see how I'm doing the um, how well is the rotation of uh, keys doing, uh, of uh, backups doing? Um, so that's one of the things that's part of this uh, series to fix. All right. Um, I don't think that um, the script had any prerequisites. Uh, so let's deploy and see what broke. No matching distribution for Django that's larger than 2.0 and smaller than 1.0. Um, hmm. uh, let's see again. This requires so pip should download requirements on the remote machine, but it hasn't asked me for password. Um, so either I'm in an, an agent that works or something is off. Um, plus I can't see why is it displaying on a Django one. Um, but, oh, right, and also before we do that actually, um, Let's make sure we are committing all stuff. So um, database setup for a magical table. Um, let's push it and actually let's go to master well let's review what we've been uh, we've been doing um i mean let's do a good hygiene So, um, what this is doing is effect in effect is uh, make initial Docker setup work. Um, 
platform and since nobody on the stream seems to be willing uh, to do a review uh, let's do what people working in teams uh, sometimes miss let's merge, merge it ourselves so pushing it out and uh, wait for the circle CI to tell us what's happening So it was working in a branch. Hopefully it will work in master uh, as well. You can see that it's relatively quick. Um, we're not doing much. So maybe meanwhile let's go in and try to figure out what was happening. Almost looked like as if uh, we need to have the app running in a virtual environment. Um, right, that was actually what was the note about. I I, I now remember. Um, this is happening locally, and the reason for that is very sad. <laughs> so, um, and I do remember now uh, why I've been mostly working in the virtual environment as opposed to Docker. Oh god, uh, yeah, so the reason is uh, that the remote is so old uh, that it doesn't have a sufficiently new OpenSSL library so it could download stuff from the Python package register. So we need to download it locally, upload it to the remote machine, and run it there. Uh, that's the best migration path we have currently. Uh, but in order to do that, uh, we have to have the correct dependencies uh, running locally, uh, as opposed to in the uh, Docker image. I mean, we could potentially we could potentially mount it and do it from Docker image, but it should be just easier to uh, do that locally. So, um, in order to make everything more complicated and um, to practice our uh, README works, um, let's do that. Um, so, I think. In which case, uh, let's actually use the system I skill. Mm. Yep. Oh god, this pisses me off. Well, um, that's how we roll. More and more constraints. Um, nevertheless, whoever is watching this, uh, you're fine running in Docker because you're not deploying. Deploy is the only thing that uh, makes this, fo uh, enforces this. Um, so I think that I should have the virtual machine here. Um, uh, we should have Python 3, right? Uh, Yep. So um, I guess let's just um, update all the requirements. And well, it's Python, Python, Sweden. Yep. Um, 
I guess my problem is going to be that we have changed the local settings and we're not going to connect the database, am I right? Yep. Um, so either I can create a local aliases to fix that or um, I can change my local pie. Uh, so actually maybe I'll bug this up locally for me and say that um, the local settings are actually docker settings um, other than that the host is localhost for now User is definitely not root. Um, so let's make a new user. That's not a docker. Um, this uh, server is definitely not available uh, outside of here. So, oh, okay, cool. Uh, so. Authenticated by and uh, let's look it up. Um, also worth noting, um, this is one danger, uh, and uh, this is why we should consider um, uh, testing with Docker all the time. Uh, this is much near my SQL. I mean, it's MariaDB, so it's going to be um, way, way newer. Uh, yeah, server yeah, version ten. Uh, I'm not sure what's what it's based on, but um, that can cause problems. Uh, I mean, you have seen how you're locked on a certain Django version because of that, so. Um, so we're going to all privileges, I think, uh, to uh, well on the database um, to this user. Right. Um, we also need to, to create a test database for them. So uh, create data, uh, create data database because we definitely want the test database to be different than the production database. Uh, because happened to nobody and they excellent developed the production database um, because of um, how they test not github for example or API mm. okay so tests start working uh, if you remember migration uh, that would work Mike migration, that's what we have deleted. Uh, let's just make sure that uh, if you do manage, you can do run server and it will work. Right, uh, so it will not work. Uh, one thing to pay attention to um, I'm connecting to a different machine. Uh, 
So this is only binding to localhost, I'm not localhost, I'm on a different port. Um, so we need to take that into account. Oh, and this is actually a database with uh, loaded production data, okay. Um, not how we should develop. Um, we will start from scratch uh, for the next episode. But I mean for the purpose of uh, deploying, um, this should work. So let's deploy and see what happens. Two thirteen. That sounds like there have been updates. Meanwhile, let's take a look at how um, the vulnerability report looks like. Uh, so, you know, we are not patching one vulnerable software with another. Django, moderate severity. What is it about? Uh, no, we are not vulnerable to it because we we are not over to the toe. Oh, two X before two, two uh, eight. We are to to that one. Oh fuck! <sighs> right. Uh, I have been reading about this vulnerability. Uh, so. This doesn't affect us. And the reason is... Uh, wait. It does. We do allow password reset, although through different workflow than Django. So they haven't fixed the 2.1 branch, which sucks, because as I've said, uh, we can't use 2.2. Uh, I mean 2.1, because of MySQL version we are having. And we can't really upgrade uh, My MySQL on that distribution, and we can't really uh, connect to a different MySQL server um, because of the old PHP server. Uh, so I think that the solution to this is to program faster. Um, the account takeover only works if you're able to craft um, the same address using Unicode characters, uh, potentially having a different host. Um, I'm thinking whether there is a good way to limit it for time being. Um, but I mean, if Django is not uh, fixing the Toledo branch anymore, then I think that the good solution to that potentially is to backport the fix on our own and do our own release of Django. Um, because it should actually be reasonably easy. I do wonder. It, Based on how it sounded, it's a simple patch. Uh, you just send uh, an email, uh, you just send the reset token to an email from a different source, which is what you should do anyway. Uh, always use the authoritative authoritative source. Um, 
so as you can see the deploy is not the fastest thing that uh, we've been doing here and it failed because GCC my we couldn't build MySQL DB on a remote server because my SQL default host is unrecorded for fuck's sake um, my guess would be newer my SQL DB version that doesn't support um, that also drop support uh, for the old my SQL so let's take a look at the day change work You can never win. Um, sure, translation. is the change lock. I'm afraid that the Pi MySQL is a different package or not. Uh, MySQL client Let's see. Is this the MySQL DB though? This is a fork of MySQL DB one. Wow. Okay. Single client is not what I set for a legacy version. Supports, oh, okay. But we are Python. Sorry, so what? Who's installing the mice? Uh, who is actually installing the MySQL DB? What do we have in requirements? Uh, oh, we are using the MySQL client above the certain version. Okay, so it's probably that. Um, never mind. So, MySQL client. Last year, I saw my MySQL client will not support Django, I don't want. Um, drop Python 3.4. Wait, well, what? what um, so I actually think that we're also stuck with 3.3. <laughs> on the remote end. Uh, let me verify that. Oh, actually we're on 3.6. That's good. How have I man uh, managed it? Cool. Um, but drop support for my SQL connector with my skill 5 foot 1 and 
5.115 and we have 5.173 so we should theoretically be good uh, but my bet would be on this one so we win say so one three thirteen is before the change. Uh, we've been on one three seven when I've been starting. Um, anything else that was failing here or dropped? Um, fix 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 fix. So my bet is on that one. So let's try um, to be under 1.4. Yeah, yep, it's a ticking bump. I know about it. Um, but while I will let this deploy, I will explain why I think it makes sense now. Um, and I've lost track of my... Yeah, right. Um, virtual environments. Uh, um, sure. So, uh, basically my strategy is uh, to try to uh, get those um, Uh, my, my strategy is to get as far as with the new version to cover like the minimal uh, breadth of the original software um, then make a switch um, say the, uh, well switch the old version to read only <coughs> um, be able to migrate uh, database away uh, use the new version of, as primary source um, have the old version running as a dumpster fire somewhere uh, for people that are interested in peaking and like develop the new version as uh, quickly as possible um, for the you know important features of the original one and uh, then educationally extend that um, but uh, before I do that uh, we need to obey the constraints uh, of this server uh, this is why I want to get away as quickly as possible because then we want to upgrade uh, all the things because we're running on unsupported everything and it's a potential security you know trash fire uh, not larger than the software that it is there now <laughs> uh, mind you uh, but still uh, it's pretty irresponsible um, so freezing on old versions not optimal um, but um, better than uh, alternatives So let's see whether it is helped. There is unfortunately no good way to debug that um, than debug in production. It's a good time to get out of the team. I am running out of uh, hot water, uh, so you know, we'll need to fix this. Um, anyhow, uh, let me know on Twitter or you know, through the channels you have to me um, how much it makes sense to project this, uh, this type of system debugging, uh, or whether I should just you know, pay a bit of an attention up front um, and clean it, uh, clean it up beforehand. Uh, but uh, my guess is that it it may be actually helpful uh, for some of you to see what are the obstacles uh, that you can encounter when doing exactly this. Like uh, what is what what is this complaint in the compiler? Um, so we have deployed. Cool. Um, seems everything is running. Uh, I mean, this is the PHP production, but um, even our new version is frank. You will get 
So our first deploy, have a TS well. Alright. So I do have like 45 minutes still. Um, so we can actually do something useful as opposed to just running up, uh, running around and setting things up. Um, let me just see whether um, we do have something else. I want to go dependencies. Okay, there's the one. Okay, so um, just to give you give you uh, give you an idea of where that is. Uh, where is the local version? I want my local version over here. Um, huh. Right. So actually we can dismiss this because the functionality to reset the password is not there yet. Um, the way it currently works uh, on production uh, is that uh, you log in using the password that you have from the old version um, and it's compared and then rehashed. And uh, then you're fucked and you have your own copy and you can't reset it. Uh, so actually, uh, it doesn't, the, the security alert really doesn't apply to us until we, uh, yeah, vulnerable cloud is actually not used. So until we do uh, function, uh, the uh, reset password functionality, but let's actually uh, keep it in mind. So, um, this is password needs um, be able to reset password, and um, this needs to work on the Django um, vulnerability in. Uh, versions that are uh, larger than 2.0 uh, but lower than 2. Dot something um, okay so that is another bucket <laughs> and um, that should be there before we launch it um, so that needs to go to production. Woo! All right. So, at charters. Um, so let's see how. Our structure actually looks like, um, which I mean, running the server would be a good idea. Hello, right? Uh, do you remember what I told you about binding? Um, this this is actually where Docker shines uh, that you can ultimate. All right. It's a really decent chance, but I forgot how login to Django admin kills the stream. Um, that's still something that, I, that sounds awesome, <laughs> just in itself. Mm. While we're doing that, um, maybe also let me get some light. All right, so um, is the stream running? That is the question. It is, okay. Um, so we are in the admin 
and what was the what also we've been going to look at uh, right so we've been thinking um, whether it makes sense um, or, or uh, we want start from the beginning uh, we want to add uh, for every of those um, arrays um, for editors to be able to add a description that says um, how they want uh, the contributions to look like. Um, so maybe even a normal login does that. That's interesting. <laughs> anyway, so um, this is how a form looks for adding uh, something new and um, there is a lot of comments about how it should look like. Um, that is uh, basically original which was used to discourage people to add something that's uh, too simple. Um, I think that it should be more welcoming now, but uh, nevertheless the point about having a certain standard uh, I think stands. Um, so let's see. Um, if I think about how the structure of the database look like. Uh, this should be an attribute uh, on those patch arrays. And um, if we look in the models, um, where is it? Uh, because there are, there are multiple models. Uh, let's not care about the migrations now, although we will have to, we will actually have to sort it out. Um, so, we actually do have the creative page concept here. So apparently uh, someone was already working on it. Um, so maybe the only thing that we need to do is to uh, expose this in uh, admin. Um, so uh, we do register a common article. Um, we to register a concept the disadvantage of this is that um, editors are per creative page uh, so every editor will have access to all the concepts so I mean, editors are people that we're working closely with, so you can kind of assume that they're not going to be idiots. Uh, but, uh, you know, if you would want tighter control, then um, this should be sorted out differently. Uh, but I think that for our purpose, uh, this is fine. Um, so let's see if we reload. We have the creative pa uh, page concepts. Um, and what we can do is to add something to the creative object page. Okay, so let's fix the naming. So what this is doing uh, is uh, it's missing the meta attribute with the translations or with the names which I keep forgetting um, how to do. So verbose name and verbose name plural, okay. Um, and, um, and I think that this should be in the docs actually. Uh, because this is an official translation. Uh, so let's take a look on um, where do we have it? I'm actually now thinking whether we are building 
uh, docs so, uh, on reader docs. We do. So let's see whether we have it. Mm. Um, so here's a note about why it's all not Czech, but um, designs dictionary. So creative page is called uh, rubrica and rubrica and what was the one that they've been actually called the creative page concept. Oh, okay. So creative page concept is going to be concept rubrica. Um, so uh, singular is I always do wonder how actually um, I um, like internet solution is even work with certain languages because it always feels like a lot of that is kind of formed by Western languages, like assuming that you only need singular and plural. Um, I wouldn't make such assumptions. Uh, on the other hand, uh, all of this is harder as it is. So, um, also the interesting question is, so this leads to a creative page. Um, why is this not translated? And the answer is because we haven't uh, created the unic. I think it's Unicode. No, it should be a string. Okay. So we haven't created uh, the string stringification. Uh, we only created a name, so uh, creative page needs string and I th think that actually uh, just Writing the name should be enough in this case for a reasonable uh, user experience. Um, so let's format the name in and see. Yep, this totally works. Test is currently. Uh, this one. And you can see that we are totally missing one for our concept as well. Um, so uh, that's going to be um, solve that page that name. All right, uh, one thing that shouldn't happen is multiple uh, concepts per page, uh, which seems like I can totally do. Uh, so let's also not forget to mark it um, as unique. And it says one to one, so what if I try to add anyone? Yep. Okay. So not the best user experience, but uh, viable. Okay. So we do have an adding. Um, let's commit. Um, this doesn't need 
anything earlier in maths to write. Uh, so let's first commit the requirements uh, that I forgot to commit. Um, and that, should, that can go to master because it was uh, production fix. So uh, fix production deployment. And uh, always don't forget to mention why you did that. So um, um, the MySQL client above this version doesn't support um, current production server is my SQL version uh, drop one migrating away the constraint uh, migrating away so that can be pushed and uh, now we can go and uh, talk about concepts. So, creative pages, concepts. Uh, uh, make adding new concepts available in admin. And now you have just uh, have to find a way how to display it. So let's see how it works in the template. So in the templates. I would have to remember in which app. <laughs> uh, so this is the main one. This is where the models are. So it's going to be here. Uh, um, we have a creative page. We have a list to it. Uh, we have a heading and we are doing articles below. So I propose that here we add a link um, to uh, to it and um for that to happen, uh, we need to create a view um, for them, and we need to get a link. And we should have uh, the page itself available, I would hope. But let's double check in view. Um, so in view, when you're um, right, the paginator is, I think, the helper function. Um, but are we getting the creative page object? Uh, wait, right here, creative uh, page was not, uh, not this. Yes. Um, so we're getting getting, we're getting articles. Uh, we are getting the slug. Um, we are not getting the creative page itself. Um, so we'll, we'll need that. I've been trying to avoid passing it, but I, I don't remember why. Uh, probably um, to have, I don't remember. I think to flatten the model hierarchy, I have like that. Uh, but in, in order to do that, um, that would make things a bit more complicated here. Um, 
but we can move in the just the concept objects. So uh, that's going to be creative. Well, that's actually so. A uh, you could see that not for not all of them we have a concept. Uh, so let's only display this um, if there is a concept and it's not nil. Um, I have always hated the template syntax. Um, so that, that uh, has to exist and it should be searchable by reverse uh, search uh, from the creative page. Let me just double check uh, that creative page um, is where the concept is. Yes, we're binding it to creative page. So uh, the concept uh, is creative uh, creative page dot Uh, right, this is so. This is a Django feature. Um, I don't remember the syntax. You can do reverse searches. So um, find a model uh, that's referring to me. Reverse lookup. That's what I'm looking at. Um, The set is curly set, right? Uh, so let me see if uh, there is a good way for Django curly set to return one on or nil. Um, there should be a helper function for that, definitely. Uh, so uh, creative page is uh, what was that? Uh, creative page concept set. Got. Uh, create page concept set. So that's a query set. And uh, now we have to look up for the attributes, uh, which would be in docs. Uh, yep. So I guess we want all. Um, no, wait. So we want to iterate this list. Uh, what does values do again? Oh, it only gives you some attributes, uh, which is not what we want. Um, so I guess the best way to do that is um, well set uh, I guess all is 
just needed to get the data. Then we can move it to list. And the only thing I'm not sure is where I can just do or none. Um, uh, because the first expression can ev uh, evaluate to empty string. Um, well, this doesn't help. Um, so this evaluates to none. Okay. I just do not have enter flying around because of the, that could be confusing. Um, but the thing is that you we want to get uh, the first item if it is there, but uh, this would give us key error. Uh, so one thing is to check it. The other thing would be to catch key exception. But you know, using exceptions for data for a normal flow is kind of meh. So uh, let's instead do that um, if a length of concepts is larger than zero, then concept is the first concept. And otherwise, uh, concept is none. Um, I'm sure there's a better way to do it, um, but this should give us the basic idea of uh, whether we are doing this right, at least somehow. So uh, we are passing in uh, the concept, are we? Yep. Um, so first let's verify that it's actually there. Uh, so, um, and actually, it uh, has a name. Maybe let's uh, let's display the name. So, this should give us at least here um, the set, and it does not because creative object has no such attribute. Um, so if only we could inspect what uh, inspect of what attribute does it have? Um, well, so why doesn't uh, was it reverse search we've been saying? Uh, reverse lookup. Um, That's bound relationships. Um, one to one, actually. So maybe it's just. Oh! Well, let's see. I don't remember this, but it, it will definitely make our life easier. be this and we can ignore all of this. Uh, let's see. Um, yep, this works and it shouldn't be present here because exactly uh, it had no such objects. Okay, so we have to uh, create it separately. So concept um, still needs to be a variable. I will try to retrieve it, uh, but if uh, 
Well, what exception is that actually? It is, does not exist for, but from which object? Related object does not exist, okay. So I assume um, creative page related object does not exist. Uh, in that case, um, sorry, wrong language. Um, in which case, concept is null. Creative page objects has no attribute, related object does not exist. <sighs> um, so, where is this exception coming from? Um, So we need to do the, not the instance, but the class that in a way makes sense, uh, except no, it's not true. If you're related to model, is, oh, it translates uh, a related object does not exist to does not exist. Um, field field two does not exist. If you don't want to import the related model, then you can do uh, my model instance uh, well, related field. Okay, that is, I mean, nice, but none of this. Uh, filter fields. Well, It would be nice if this would be in Django Docs as opposed to you know, random stack overflow questions searchable in Django Docs. Let me phrase it this way. Um, which. Okay. Um, in this case, I don't actually mind importing it. Uh, so. Uh, Let's see whether this works. I kind of finding find it interesting if this will work. Uh, but if it's subclassing, that's very cool. Um, okay, that works. Okay, that's pretty cool. So this will need some styling, and uh, it will also need URL. So let's do that. Um, and by URL, I also mean view. Um, and then the question is, so should that be under the Slack? It potentially can, because uh, we are always starting the URL with article ID, and then adding article Slack. Uh, so if there would, if you would dedicate a prefix, um, that should work. And I kind of like that more than the other way, I think, uh, which means like prefixing, uh, like creating a separate root uh, for the concept and to use the creative page slug um, as a way to select it. Um, any potential conflict anyone can see? Um, um, I'm not sure. So, 
Also, we are actually not running live for some reason. Um, so I don't know. Uh, uh -huh. Trying to figure out um, the broadcasting still. Anyway, so the uh, the pro of the prefix is that it's kind of clean going forward. Um, the pro of the suffix is that. To me, it uh, it is more correct hierarchy um, in terms of um, you know importance and what belongs to what. Uh, I think that neither neither is very like it's not such a big deal here. I think. Um, How is it working on the current production? Well, that's uh, HTML completely somewhere else. So, I mean, let me pin it under it. Um, so, let's say concept. Uh, um, it is uh, a creative page. Concept um, creative cage concept is going to be the view. Um, and it should get request and it should get a creative page slug. Hmm. And what we will need, uh, need here is um, creative page concept actually and Object or 404, and we will. That's a good question. Are we going to render it? Are we going to have a template per uh, creative page, or are we going to have a, a one global template? for all concepts. I say let's start with the simpler. Um, so global concept template, but So no model name, but we will still need um, the creative page object. Um, and that will always, uh, uh, this attribute will always exist. Uh, right. I tend to I tend to um, name the objects you actually need in the view. Uh, so in the template, you don't do like, you know, chaining of the lens stuff. Um, so we'll need heading. Uh, we will not need creative page slug. We will need a creative page concept though. Uh, I think that we can shorten it. Uh, to um, anything else? I mean, I would hope that not much. Uh, so um, in here, 
so it's going to be under creative pages and it's going to be concept HTML um, yeah no no pagination needed um, the heading is actually going to be including the whole concept idea um, Actually, let me look at uh, the detail of some article, whether... Right. I mean, it is an article. And it has a content. Um, so... Yeah. Um, it should have its structure uh, so um, we are going to allow HTML for uh, our right of streets editors um, although still somehow sanitized We'll see how it works. Uh, so idea is not page uh, one article, not article. Um, well, it, yes, CSS wise, yes. Page uh, any concept. Okay, and right. So the key thing was that in that common article list which is something that we should add um, to more of those we wanted to do to, uh, to link to it so the URL is uh, no was it creative, uh, creative pages concept? I think yeah. um, creative pages concept, and the slug is the argument. Oh, was this correct? No, what just happened? Uh, Creative page slug. Um, so let's see. Yep, it's to an URL and um, count uh, right. And there's going to, yeah. Uh, We need to go the other way uh, because the slug doesn't apply, and we need we want the creative page anyway. So um, what we should do is uh, get the creative page with the slug given to us, and uh, get the concept from the. Creative page uh, Well, actually, let's do it the same way as here uh, except um, When this is not done uh, Then uh, and we have opted for the longer name, well, easily fixable. Uh, then we are analyzing uh, HTTP 404. Okay. There we go. Um, so.
A. No, I don't want to save the page. I want to save the form. Um, so this works. Uh, if we add bold, it works as I mean, let's see whether it works. Yep. And uh, there should probably be a way to go back. Um, but I think that this works sufficiently well. Uh, it doesn't kill the ones that don't have it. Uh, so let's see if we add it there. Yep, that works as well. Okay, so I would say uh, we're good with this um, for for this purpose. Uh, the only thing that we haven't done and should do is that uh, we have added this to common articles, but um, we do have a dedicated um, pages uh, that are not a common article uh, so on list um, they should we need to copy paste basically into the yeah uh, we need to copy paste into the templates and I'm afraid that when we do that we need to get that uh, object in view specifically, um, which I think um, is to find out. No, really. Um, but will it work then? Let's see. Um, <laughs> Magic. Okay, so gallery monsters. And for the gallery. I mean for the gallery. Uh this right, because it's same as gallery for time being. Um, the only thing that uh, is different, uh, right, so uh, one thing that is that I have changed, um, and probably don't want to change, is that uh, in the original version this was only displayed for locked in users, because uh, if you are not locked in, um, you can contribute, uh, so it made no sense um, to show you how, uh, you know, uh, how, what are the requirements for contribution. Um, so, um, that's user is authenticated, I think. Yep. Yep. Um, so that's the one we want. And all of those. Um, there definitely is a sophisticated shortcut um, that makes this work, um, but fortunately uh, that's all and those are not conception. Okay, so I'm saying we're done. So, um, Display creative conceptions and um, why we will waiting be waiting for build. we will 
will be waiting for belt. Um, I want to do something. And I forgot where it was. Um, well, uh, first let's see uh, what we can close. So oh, this worked, this worked. Um, this worked. Uh, here we don't need any adjustments, I think. And um, right, um, let's properly reference stuff. Actually, fix, but I don't like auto fixing. Uh, 37. Uh, this one we push off because we have overridden history. Um, so Right, I wanted to actually read the code. Um, even like even it is definitely better for someone else to look at it, uh, but also just self review is better than nothing. So uh, this should fix thirty seven. What will I mean? What happens if you assign a pull request to a project? Whatever. Let's create a pull request and see what we have. Uh, so registering it, proper naming, which should probably could be probably a separate comment, but uh, okay. We are. Just of note, we are relying on proper stringification in the template, which um fine, uh, but it, it is you know uh, more implicit than explicit, so something to pay attention to. Uh, <coughs> defensive concepts, um, yeah, this should be pretty easy. Uh, famous last words. Um, so let's see what circle has to say to it. Running. But before I did edit the refs, it worked. Uh, so since uh, we are. Oh, success. Okay. So. Um, what else can we do? Then uh, to run deploy. Otherwise, what would be the fun in that? You know, how to ruin um, evening for yourself? So, uh, ah, crap. Danger of having a D on the table, um, especially if you're me. So, next week, um, I mean, I've been hoping to have the proper number one here, uh, number one episode now. Um, so, the next one is going to be in two weeks. Uh, but in order to build a momentum for myself, uh, I will try to record an episode next week, uh, but it will be a travel edition. Um, so it um, will be with, let's call it, uh, limited resources. Um, and I'm not sure whether it will be broadcasted uh, because, uh, you know, I'm unsure of the internet uh, that I will have. 
so I will probably pick up something that doesn't require the yellow infrastructure, um, which is probably the custom HTML parser um, that is in the old version. That's a lot of fun. Uh, so uh, mm, that is the plan for next week. Uh, if not, then I will see you in two weeks, in which I hope to have a proper um, you know, camera and mic stand, uh, finally. So we can, I can start uh, archiving this properly um, and have something that works for more people. Uh, I also hope that uh, the, yeah, that I'll figure out the Django admin log <laughs> so I don't crash for you so often. And um, I'm looking forward to build a momentum on those. Uh, so if this has been helpful, let me know. Um, you know, in the comments, uh, good ways to ping me on Twitter, um, whether this is something that's useful for you. And um, let's see how this deploy goes first. Um, you know, I'm starting a celebratory wrap up um, before... Uh, before... Uh, you know, potentially uh, desired. And also, I hope that at one point I will finally figure out those agents. Um, but uh, this is pending me doing an order and uh, various deliveries of various people, which is always fun. So uh, let's check production. So on production, things are actually not crashing. Uh, see? So, um, logging in on production <laughs> fucks up things as well uh, for OBS. Uh, so, also if you have any tips for a different streaming software, let me know. Um, but anyway... Um, ha! Huh, I thought that I have admin rights under my account on production. That... Is, um, I will totally crush you even if I'm not locked in. <laughs> um, but actually, I need to figure out what my admin credentials are. <laughs> I need to look them up. Uh, this is fun. Uh, I haven't thought. So I'll try to put it until next week um, because you know this is going to involve debugging with form that's going to crush you. So. See you there next week uh, or in two weeks and um, drink tea. Bye.